Hey, it's Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and I'm back with another dose of your quilting therapy. In this episode, I show you how easy it is to quilt diamond-shaped blocks using the boomerang quilt pattern designed and pieced by Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts. I've quilted the same exact quilt pattern a couple other times, so I'm hoping that I can come up with something different and interesting that she'll still love. Now normally I quilt from home in my home studio, but she said this quilt wasn't a secret, so I didn't have to hide it. So I decided that instead of staying home, I'm gonna pack up my stuff and head to the quilt shop and work there. Well, I've made it to the shop and I've laid out her beautiful quilt. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I cannot wait to get started on it. But I have to wait a few minutes before I could get started. Turns out this quilt is causing quite a stir with the customers in my quilt shop. So, I'm supposed to be quilting, but it's hard to quilt when my friends keep coming by and saying hi. Hey, Kara. Do you like Julie's quilt? Oh, beautiful. Isn't that fun? And all that Tula fabric? Tula, Tula, Tula pink. And how many Tula pink kits do you think you have at your house? Probably six. And how many do you think you're going to give to me? None. Oh, well, that's okay. I still love you. So it is kind of difficult to quilt when everybody's oogling the quilt. But what can I say? It's a beautiful quilt. It's kind of hard not to stare at it. You want to show them the backing? Show the backing. Look at that. Julie, if your quilt goes missing, I think it was Kara that took it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to load the top, but first got to put on the back. While there's a lull in business, I'm going to go ahead and get this quilt loaded. And as you can tell, I'm moving pretty quickly. Don't be that impressed. It's just the magic of film editing. Now, what I love about being at the shop is I never know who's going to stop by. And you can imagine my surprise when I looked over and saw my mom. Come here, mom. Come here. Right here. Come here. Come on, quickly. This is my mom, by the way. Oh. Come here. I love you. I love you. It's right here. So this is my mom. Just happened to stop by while I'm working on a quilt. I'm filming a video right now. <laughs> Are you mad at me right now? Don't be mad. Don't be mad. My mom's coming to pick up a quilt and she just didn't know I was working on a video and I'm loading that. All right, just say hi. Hi. All right, now you can come off the camera. The Angela's gone. That was awesome. It's a great thing that I cannot get grounded anymore because I can't tell whether she wanted to hug me or smack me. But don't worry, she still loves me. If I'm being honest, one of my favorite things about quilting at the shop is being so close to our lovely display of thread. I just have to walk over and decide what color it is I want to use. Now I love a 50 weight thread because it blends in with a range of colors and I'm just looking for that one shade that just jumps out and says, use me, use me. I think I have it. Not that one. I'm going to go a little bit lighter, a nice pale light green that's going to look beautiful with tulip pink fabric. Thread selected, now it's time to quilt. A little bit. So I'm going to show you kind of what I'm thinking and kind of what uh, the plan is for this quilt. So every time I look at a quilt and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to quilt it, I first ask myself what's the most important thing about the quilt. Now with Julie Herman's quilts, usually it's the pattern. The fact that she's you know, designed the pattern to make these interesting recreating shapes. If the pattern is the most important thing, I love to use echoing to highlight those shapes and really kind of pull out those individual pieces. But this quilt is just a little different because she used all of her favorite Tula Pink fabrics. If the fabric is the most important thing, I love to quilt around those elements or pull out that overall theme and use it in different areas. So in this quilt, I'm gonna to have to do a little of both. I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of echoing and some curvier florally kind of quilting that kind of emphasizes the beautiful softness of the tulip pink fabric. Right now, so far, I've been working on this fun idea where I can quilt this flowery shape up here. And then down here, I love how the serpentine line is just filling in that shape and it just looks so pretty. Let me show you that this design might be easier than you think. From the point of the diamond, quilt a line that curves out to the bottom of the block and back to the starting point. If you're feeling adventurous, you can go ahead and add another little echo inside of that. And then I'm going to quilt one side of the block by arcing out and back. While not technically a serpentine line, that arc is going to set us up for our next step, which is, in fact, a serpentine line. I'm going to curve out towards the outer point and then echo my way back, almost like the sides of a fern. There we go. I have half of the block done. I just have to do the other side and I'm going to get there by stitching in the ditch. 
traveling is really important because it helps me quilt this whole block without starting and stopping. And I'm going to repeat what I've just done on the other side of the block. As I'm filling in that space, I'm trying really, really hard to end on that outermost corner. If I don't, it's not a big deal. I can just travel on over there. But ultimately, that is the, the place I want to end up at. Now, what I love about quilting is that you can switch it up at any time. If you don't like serpentine lines or, like me, you just got a little bored, you can switch out with some different uh, variations. For example, here, I'm just quilting paisleys and echoing, echoing, echoing to fill them in. So whenever you see a design that you don't love or you're not sure how to do, ask yourself what you can switch out to make it easier. Now this design is definitely going to look more like a feather than a flower, but I don't care. I still think it looks great on this quilt. Now if you look closely, you'll see that all my echo lines are about a quarter inch apart. Do you think that's because I necessarily love the way it looks? Well, yes, I do love the way it looks but it's also because I'm using the foot of my machine as a guide to help keep those lines nice and consistent. And when I'm done, I have this beautiful, paisley, feathery, flowery design that looks great. Or if you really love the person you're quilting this quilt for, you could add some feathers. And it has a little bit of backtracking on it, but it looks so pretty in this block. So as you can tell, I'm having fun using all different kinds of variations of the same design. Now, even though I love playing around with different variations, I quilted all the small diamonds the same with the continuous curve flowery shape that goes from point to point to point. Now, when I'm quilting these curves, I'm definitely freehanding them. But if you're more of a perfectionist or you're newer at free motion quilting, a curved ruler might help make these a little bit more easy. I'm positioning the ruler so that I'll work my way around the outer edge and come to that point. So I'm leaving myself about a quarter inch gap so that that happens. My next curve is going to go out to the middle of the block and back. And I don't have to do either side first, so I'm going to keep the ruler in position, just rotate it slightly and go out to that point, remembering there's about a quarter of an inch between the needle and the edge of the foot. I'm rotating the ruler and then going back, quilting my curve in the opposite direction, coming back to that point. Now the main thing to remember is this ruler is just a, a guide. It doesn't have to be perfect. That was so much fun. Let's do it again. I'm going to curve out to that point and then curve back, coming back to the same point that I started. Leaving myself space so that my needle ends as close to that point as it can. And I'm just going to keep on doing that, going out to the middle side of the block, returning back to the point, and then on to the next side. Now, why I love this design is I can start from one point, quilt the design, and end on the next. Now, let's see how that looks. Oh, isn't that a pretty little flower? I think that's definitely quilt worthy right there. Now, any curved ruler is going to work, but I'm using the multi clamshell from Handy Gadgets, and I have some of this um, sticky grip on the back. It's just going to keep that ruler from sliding as I'm working away, working my way around those curves. But remember, you don't have to have a special ruler to quilt this design. Close enough is definitely good enough. Okay, there's probably something that you should know about me. I am easily bored. That's right, if I'm quilting the same design over the whole quilt, I can tend to get, well, really bored. So what I like to do is switch up the designs. And here, I'm just getting out my straight edge ruler and doing some dot to dot quilting. The reason I love this technique so much is that I can quilt the whole block without starting and stopping or even marking out the design. I'm sure I could give this an artistic reason, say something like, I love the juxtaposition of the straight lines with the curvy. But honestly, I just got tired of doing curvy lines and I thought, hmm, let's see what fun geometric designs I can come up with. Ultimately though, I think it's so much fun when you have several different designs on a quilt. Since I'm using this 50 weight thread, the quilting won't overwhelm the quilt top, but still add a lot of visual interest. Now that I've figured out how I'm going to quilt this quilt, all that's left to do is to work through all the blocks. You might think that it would be a little distracting working at the shop, but it's really not too bad. I can tune out all the distractions, especially once I found my quilting groove. So working at the shop is one of my favorite things to do. I mean, when you're surrounded by such a beautiful office, it's hard to uh, not love it. Another reason I like working at the shop so much is that I have people around to keep me company. It can be kind of lonely when you're in your own quilting room all the time. And so Becky is a great friend. We like to chat 
but she also has a great mothering instinct and she takes such good care of me when I'm quilting. She's so sweet. She rubs my back, makes sure that I'm not getting too hot, and even from time to time brings me coffee. <sighs> what can I say? I am so, so incredibly spoiled. Thanks to that caffeine boost, I am so, so close to finishing this quilt. I can almost taste it. Surely I'm not the only one that gets really excited when I finish the quilt. Maybe I am the only one that dances though. This is it, the best moment, the unfurling. You want to know the best part about quilting for Julie Herman? I don't have to do any of the binding. I get to give it one last hug, trim any of those extra threads, and send it back to its home. I had so much fun with those serpentine lines and using contrasting straight lines and just really having a fun time with all the different variations. And really, I think that's why I love quilting so much. I think it's the funnest part of the whole quilt making process. So the next time you're sitting at your quilt trying to decide what it is you're going to quilt on it, try seeing if there's some fun variations of this serpentine line that you can fit into those blocks, even if they're not diamond shaped. And of course we have to see the back of the quilt with that beautiful pieced backing and the label that she's put in there. Thanks so much for watching. For more machine quilting tips and tricks, visit my website, quiltingismytherapy.com.